For the following exercise, determine whether the relation represents y as a function of x. All right, so first in order to prove this, we just have to understand what a function is. So we defined it down here under the memorize this section. So it says a function is a set of ordered pairs, x, y, right, in which each x cannot have more than one y. In other words, each x can have only one y. So that's good in terms of theory. Now what we have is we have a certain sequence of steps that we can follow in order to identify whether this thing is a function or not. All right. And if we apply these steps down here on the bottom left, we will then come to a conclusion about the definition of a function and we can state whether this thing represents a function or not. All right. So the first step in identifying whether this relation represents a function will be to first solve this equation, 5x plus 2y is equal to 10 and solve it for y. Okay. So in order to do that, right, we subtract the 5x from both sides. That's the first step. And we'll come to a value of 2y will equal the negative 5x plus 10. And then solving for y, divide both sides by 2. And y then becomes negative 5x plus 10 all over 2. Now what you can do is you can simplify this even further. You don't necessarily have to, but you can simplify it further in putting each of the values in the numerator both over 2. So I can say negative 5 over 2x plus then it would be 10 over 2, which is the same thing as just saying 5, right? So this would be then the uh, formula for the function when I solve it for y. Okay, so now once we solve this thing for y, what we're able to do then is we're able to plug that now into our graphing calculator. So take a minute, plug it into the graphing calculator, or consider what the nature of this function looks like, right? The nature of this function looks like y is equal to mx plus b. And this probably should be memorized right at this point that this relationship, this general relationship represents a linear line, all right? So now when I draw, or when you graph the function, the y-intercept is located roughly around five, positive five, and it has a negative slope of five halves. In other words, two and a half. So it's probably gonna have a, the graph will look something like this, right? And it will continue on indefinitely in both directions. So we graphed it, right? That's simple. Then the third step now is to conduct the vertical line test, all right? So um, the vertical line test basically states that if a vertical line does not intersect the graph more than once, then the graph is a function, okay? So now what I do here in step three is just simply draw a vertical line anywhere you like. So if I draw a vertical line here, I realize that this vertical line only intersects the graph at one location. If I were to draw, let's say, a vertical line here, I realize it only intersects the graph at that location. If I were to draw it out here, it only intersects at that location, right? And I can kind of, even though I don't know, right? I mean, this graph continues on forever, like we said, but um, you know, I don't have to examine every single case because we understand the, the nature of this graph is just a straight line. And no matter what, wherever I draw this vertical line, it's only going to intersect, intersect the graph at one location. And therefore, since the vertical line only intersects the graph at one location, we can indeed then call this a function. All right. Guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe. We've got more videos coming out to you. And I look forward to helping you with the next question. Take care.